morning. morning. Welcome to CS uh, 530. So this will be a uh, small class. <clears throat> Let me hand out some information about the class. about uh, fault tolerant uh, computing uh, in a way one way to look at this class is that this is about the real world so welcome to the real world uh, in an ideal world uh, things are perfect the software you design it runs as you expect things don't break down other signs you make they hold but the truth is that nothing really is uh, perfect in this world. And so you will have defects in the software. You will have uh, uh, weaknesses in your designs. Uh, things will break down. And in fact, in um, a lot of everyday things, if you did not have some kind of fault tolerance, uh, things would not work. And fault tolerance is actually uh, widely applicable. It is not just in uh, computing. In computing, of course, that is what we will uh, consider in this class. But it is applied in other uh, fields also. For example, in a car, you have the spare tire. And sometimes, uh, most of the time, you don't need the spare tire. So you could probably take it out and not have a spare tire. But sometimes, it can be uh, quite uh, valuable. Uh, in some situations, uh, uh, fault tolerance or redundancy that is used uh, uh, almost every time. So for example, whenever you read any uh, uh, music from a CD player, uh, there is redundancy in that information and that is being used to ch uh, check. Uh, whenever packets are transmitted uh, on the internet, there is some kind of uh, scheme uh, built in that makes sure that packets of information are not lost. So this is about the real world. Um, so let me introduce uh, myself. So this is my name. Malaya, that is my uh, last name. And my office is in the computer science building, which is just uh, next door and my tentative office hours Tuesday Thursday 11 to 12 sort of right after this class and uh, we don't have a textbook and that is actually a trade-off uh, it's nice to have a textbook because you know that most of the stuff is going to be there however uh, um, the way I uh, see fault tolerant uh, computing it uh, incorporates uh, a few different uh, fields and there isn't uh, really a single book that will uh, cover uh, all the different uh, areas uh, in uh, fault tolerant computing that we want to uh, look at. Uh, so we are going to use some, uh, we are going to draw material from different uh, books. Uh, we. Um, Incidentally, I have copies of a um, book that, uh, um, if you like, you can uh, borrow from me uh, for the semester and use it. And occasionally, uh, you will find some of the things in there. Okay, let us uh, see uh, how this uh, will work. Most of the time I will not use overhead, but occasionally I want to use it, so I want to try it out and see how well it uh, works. So there, there is some material that is available online, so that is uh, going to be available on the course website. So for example, there is a, a, a book 
systems and software reliability assurance notebook. Again, that is something that we uh, uh, will not use uh, directly, but it is available as a reference book. Uh, it actually, it turns out that this uh, was compiled for a uh, uh, for U.S. Uh, military purposes for Air Force, and since it is in, it's not copyrighted, we are allowed to uh, 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 put it on our website. So that is available, and there are some other uh, material that is available on the web, and I will share some links with you. And also, uh, I will use some slides and. Uh, uh, sometime uh, when we are sort of uh, finishing a uh, discussion of a topic, I will uh, put the slides on the web so you can uh, go and take a look at the slides. Um, and most of the time, uh, these resources should be enough. However, uh, uh, I guess the classroom discussions are uh, important. So uh, because we don't have a book, uh, And as I, uh, I mentioned about the course website, which is available, I guess you just go to the computer science uh, department uh, website and uh, you will find the course website. Um, oh, and my, uh, I mentioned about my office hours. Now there are two options that I have uh, usually uh, made available. Option one is the usual thing. Most of the students take option one. And with, uh, with both options, there are two tests. So there's a test one and test two, two midterm tests, besides a final that comes at the end, which incidentally is scheduled on December 13th. And uh, uh, so with the first option, which is the usual one, uh, you have uh, the two tests and the final. And in addition, you have a term project and term projects is a major part of this course. So I want you to uh, pick a topic, and later we will uh, discuss that in more detail. Study that in detail, and uh, do some research. And also, uh, 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 we will uh, discuss occasionally in the class. Now there's, we have a 10% uh, for uh, uh, different types of feedback. So I might a couple of times give you some uh, written uh, assignment. And at other times I uh, will use some quizzes. Incidentally, this course has an online uh, version that is occasionally taught. So it is taken by people who are, I guess, somewhere out there. Uh, California, New York, and uh, so we have developed some uh, quizzes, and actually quizzes are uh, very useful for people who are uh, not attending the class in person because it keeps them in track with uh, what is supposed to be going on. Now since we have the quizzes available, so you might as well use the quizzes, so we will uh, also use some of the quizzes or I might redesign some quizzes. Uh, so so a, a couple of uh, assignments I will collect uh, either on paper or uh, maybe you can submit them using uh, online submission using RAMCT. How many of you have used uh, RAMCT before? You haven't used uh, RAMCT? No, I'm actually uh, new here. Just came here this fall, so it's all kind of. Oh, okay. So, so you will find out about RAMCT. Yeah. And uh, so you haven't used RAMCT. No, that's my first time here too. Oh, okay. So uh, welcome. Thanks. So um, RAMCT is actually a, a rather interesting uh, uh, interface. So for each course where instructor is instructor has uh, chosen to do so, they can uh, create a RAMCT section for that class. So there's a RAM CT. Um, so you have a, a login, and you will be able to log in into uh, RAM CT. And when you log in into RAM CT, you will see uh, the courses in which you are enrolled. 
So, um, and that includes CS530. And basically, I will use RAMCT. In the past, we have used like, other uh, mechanisms. So sometimes we would write our own uh, scripts for uh, submission of materials. But RAMCT advantage is that it is uh, centralized. And uh, so RAMCT is good for uh, online submission. So when you have to submit something online, uh, you can submit it uh, using uh, RAMCT. And uh, advantage is you could I could set the submission deadline, maybe whatever, midnight or something, and you can still uh, do it. And also, we can have online quizzes on RAMCT. So quizzes, I suppose we could have quizzes uh, in the class also, but it is sometimes convenient to have online quizzes. And I will let you, I will give you two chances. So you can take the quiz once, and then you can take the quiz again, and uh, we will take the higher score and basically uh, the quizzes are kind of a uh, feedback mechanism so you can see what kind of topics are in, in there and in case you haven't uh, looked at something more carefully you can go back and read again and uh, take the quiz again so that we will include uh, them in the feedback uh, modules for term project we will uh, talk uh, about that more we will talk about what are the sources of information? What is uh, the uh, approach for research uh, you should use? And um, so here, uh, there are some details on the term project. So after you have selected your project, so you will select a project. It has to be something that is uh, uh, related with what we are doing in the class. and. Uh, and if you like, you can uh, talk with me earlier and see if it would be uh, something uh, suitable. And most of the time it is a uh, specialized topic that you are more interested in. And you want to study that in detail. And you will uh, search the literature, find out related uh, sources, and uh, find what is the current uh, state of the art. Uh, perhaps identify unsolved problems. Now you have to uh, do at least some research. That means you have to uh, go beyond what people have said already. So maybe you want to identify. Uh, now by research, I don't mean that you need to uh, come up with uh, something that is a new idea that can be published uh, in a conference or a journal. Uh, as that sometimes happens. It turns out that some ideas that people identify here, it, they turn out to be uh, kind of interesting. And eventually, after some more work, uh, uh, there are there's some publishable results. But basically, you have to uh, uh, think and identify what are the problems that people have not yet addressed, what people need to work on, and any original ideas you may have. And so I will need a one-page proposal on October 7th. And it should include your motivation, brief uh, scope of study, what is that you will uh, study, and some specific uh, references. So you should have uh, looked at uh, at least some of the available uh, literature. Now these days, uh, finding uh, references that has become online so you don't uh, really need to go to the library. Other libraries uh, really is a good place to be uh, for uh, studying. But uh, most of the good stuff today is available online. Not everything. So we, we have access to um, ACM. How many of you have used uh, ACM Digital Library? So some of you have used, so if you, so uh, you will, uh, you should uh, go ahead and find out about the ACM Digital Library. Oh, in the on the course uh, web page, you will find some links. So you can start playing with those links and uh, try exploring the ACM Digital Library, and also try exploring uh, IEEE Explore. So these are the two uh, of the most uh, useful.